Hey everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, if you were to take Billy Gibbons and Jimmy Page and put them in a blender, you'd get a hybrid that sounds like this lesson. And so this is a classic rock lesson. It's got two scales, so the song switches keys. It starts in the key of G, so we start in the G minor pentatonic scale, and then it goes to a C, and so we'll switch to the C minor pentatonic scale. And I haven't done that in a previous lesson. We haven't really switched scales in the same song, so... So we're going to learn that in this lesson. I'm going to show you how to play everything that I played in the intro, note for note. Uh, if you want to download the tablature and the jam track that you can practice along with, the MP3 file, you can get them at activemelody.com. Just look for EP062. That's a lesson number for this lesson. Uh, you'll also be able to watch bonus video content, so, so part two video. In this lesson, we're going to, only going to focus on the first half, so this is part one. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so the first thing that I play is this little lick that goes like this. And uh, let's, let's learn that first, and then we'll move on. Now notice what's happening. I'm bouncing back and forth between the fourth string and the third string, and I'm really staying here on the third fret with my left hand. Uh, another thing to point out is each time that I hit a note, you're going to hear that I'm pushing it slightly sharp. As opposed to playing it straight, it would sound like this. There's, it gives it a nice, a, a different kind of bluesy feel, a little bit country even, to, to push it uh, sharp like that. So uh, we start by playing the open D string, or the fourth string, and I just do a downstroke with my right hand. And then as soon as I play that, I, I do a hammer-on with my left hand to the third fret, fourth string. And again, I push it slightly sharp when I hammer it on. Hear it? It's not a full bend. It's, you're not going a whole, uh, f a full step. You're just doing, you know, it's just slight. Now after that, then I play the open G string or the third string. Now after I play the open third string, then I play. So let's back it up and play all of that thus far. We have. Got it? So you can start to get a groove. And you know, if you're having a hard time with this, if you're new to playing this kind of stuff, just take each little piece and just try and, and get it down to where you can, you can set a metronome or tap your foot or something to keep it rhythmic so that you've got some form of consistency. Now after that I played, and that's a hammer on again. And then, uh, and then playing the open third string. So that's again on the fourth string. We're going to play the open fourth string, a hammer on to the third fret on the fourth string, and then we're playing the open G string or the third string. Okay, let's back up and put it all together. Now we have. So I'm sure some of you are wondering where we're at in terms of scales. So we're in the we're in the key of G, and we're down here playing. So with G, you know, your third fret is your root fret. So we're playing down here. Some of these open notes would be really fretted down here. Obviously, the nut is replacing my finger, but so that puts us in pattern five. So I'm referring to the blues lead course uh, that it breaks down all the patterns, which you can get to at ActiveMelody.com. But uh, that's where we're at. So. That's where these licks would be. So if we were in the key of A, it would look like this. You'd have more of a stretch because you're going four frets. And that's what's nice about having playing down here in G when you're playing pattern five because you're, the nut replaces that. So you can do... You have these 
licks that you can do in the key of G that you couldn't do in other keys. So just remember that. If you're playing in the key of G and you want to come down, you've got some, you've, you can at least come back to this, you know, this fourth string and third string and have a place to kind of rumble around a little bit. And it's pretty easy to do. Okay, so we have. Now after that, I played. Now let's break that down. And I'll, again, I'm, start, I'm using my middle finger here with the left hand, and I'm starting on the third fret, fourth string. And as soon as I play it, I'm going to do a pull off and another hammer on. See, watch this. See those three notes? Watch my right hand. I pick it once. And, and I do a pull off and then a hammer on to the fifth string on the third fret. Then I come down with my pointer finger and play the first fret on the fifth string. And after I play that, then I come up here and play the open G string of the third string. And then I use my ring finger to reach down here and play the sixth fret. I'm sorry, not the sixth fret, the sixth string on the third fret, which is just an octave lower. So you have this, this G, and then you have this G. You can see there's just an octave, of, uh, there's, there's an octave between them. So it's the same note. Okay, so what we have then is we have. Now watch with the right hand. I'm going to do a down stroke downstroke again. Now I'm going to come up here and do an upstroke on this G string, or the third string. And then that puts me right in position to come up here and do a downstroke when I play the uh, this third fret uh, sixth string, which is a G. So here it is. That's how that little run looks. Now let's put those two parts together. So we have... Let me do it again. Now this is where you're going to want to uh, download, if you haven't done so already, download the jam track and try and play along with it. There's a count in and then you'll... Once you feel comfortable uh, and, and can do that. Now if, if you're struggling, uh, the general rule of thumb or, you know, is to, to not try and play along with not trying to keep up with the tempo, just try and get it accurate. Speed will come over time, it always does. It takes some people a little longer than others, it just depends on muscle memory and, and some of those things, and some of us are just more natural with that. I'm a very slow uh, learner, so it, it takes me a long time to, uh, to learn these things, but I'm just, the one thing I will say is I'm very consistent with just trying it over and over again until I can, I can do it. <laughs> So it depends on your level of sanity, I think. That's what I'm trying to say. Some of us are more insane than others. Okay, now after that, then I have this, this sounds like, this is definitely a Jimmy Page thing. So here's what I'm doing. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. I got my ring finger on the second string, third fret. And then I'm strat. I'm not playing the third string, but on the fourth string, uh, I'm playing uh, on the third fret as well. So and I'm and I'm using so it's, uh, strings two and four on the third fret, and I, so I'm skipping the G string or the third string. And when I'm playing this, I'm and that's really the shape. And I it's easier for me to use my ring finger and middle finger as opposed to these two, because this lets you be right back into position to do your do the other part, you know. So um so what I'm playing is I'm playing strings four, three, which is an open G and two. And I'm sliding it from the third fret up to the fifth fret, back to the third fret, back to the fifth fret. So like this. Watch the right hand, it's just down, down, down. And I, you can hear me stop in the sound.
to control it, I'm using you know this hand as I come down to do the picking. I kind of kill the strings to to control when it's going to ring and when it's not because you got that open G string, it's, which is just going to ring if you don't stop it. So let's put those two parts together. Now we have. Now one other thing you'll notice that I do, so after I go, hear how I stopped it? Just like that. And I'm just kind of letting my, my that, and that just creates a little bit of a rhythm. Now you can do this by either picking it or, you know, just slapping your hand against it, but you don't have to do that. It just helps me to kind of keep the rhythm going. I always try and keep as much motion as I can in the right hand. You can hear I'm adding a few ghost strums in there as well. Right there's one. And it just helps me with the timing. Uh, it's not necessary. You don't have to do it. You could just play it straight. Or you could play it with a, the ghost drum in there, like this. Um, you know, it's either one works fine. Uh, it just depends on um, what you require to keep the rhythm going. And for me, it's easier just to kind of keep the motion going with my right hand. So it's harder to do that when you're practicing it slowly because you're going to be concentrating on just trying to be accurate. You're going to be spending a lot of time staring down here. Um, and just trying to get the notes to come out and and work work with that first just try and get, create the notes and then over time as you get more comfortable with them you'll start to be able to add more rhythmics you know, more rhythmic uh, strums and things um, that comes over time okay so let's put them all together so what we have uh, if we put the two pieces together we have And that's really all I have for that G part of the song. Now what happens next is uh, the, the, the song switches to the key of C. So the rhythm does that. And then I go up here and play um, a, a lead in the key of C, which is kind of nice because we're switching keys in the same song. And that's something I don't typically show in lessons. But, um, but it happens in songs a lot. So... Uh, so anyway, you're going to want to go to activemelody.com, look for EP062, and watch the second video for the solo part.